This is part 7 in our series of lectures on section 2.2, and in this lecture we'll do a proof involving Cartesian products of sets. There are several general results that one can prove involving Cartesian products and other uh, set operations. This is theorem 2.2.3 in your text um, that gives you some general properties that are true for Cartesian products of sets. Uh, we're only going to consider this one as the model of a proof, but you should, as an exercise, do the remaining ones. Notice that part A is a theorem about equality of two sets, and so the way you prove it is you prove that the left-hand side is a subset of the right-hand side, and then you prove that the right-hand side is a subset of the left-hand side. And so your proof will involve at least two paragraphs. In the first paragraph, you'll take a typical element of the left-hand side, and you'll use working definitions in order to show that it's, a sub it's, it's also an element of the right-hand side. And in the second paragraph, you'll start over again, and you'll then take an element of the right-hand side, and um, using working definitions, you'll show that it's an element also of the left-hand side. Now, in part A, both sides involve two set operations, Cartesian product and union. Now, when you take an element of the left-hand side, the question is, what should you see first? Should you see the Cartesian product, or should you see the union? Well, when you're looking at the left-hand side, you should first see the Cartesian product. This is the Cartesian product of two sets, A with B union C. So a typical element of that would be an element of the form X comma Y would be an ordered pair XY, where X is an element of A and Y is an element of B union C, and that Y is an element of B union C, which is a union of sets, and that says that Y is either an element of B or an element of C. And so you would follow that through. Um, you'd follow those two cases through as to whether y is an element of b or an element of c in order to then show that x, y lies in the right-hand side. On the other hand, when you're looking at an element of the right-hand side, you shouldn't see the Cartesian product first. You should see the union first because it's a union of the two sets a cross b and a cross c. And therefore, if you have an xy in here, it's either xy is in here, or xy is in here. And if xy is in here, then that means that x is in a and y is in b. And if xy is in here, that means that x is in a and, x and y is in c. So the challenge in this problem is to understand working definition of Cartesian product and union, and to use those properties in the right order. Okay, so put your video on pause, and um, see if you could come up with that two-paragraph two proof of the fact that this set is equal to this set. And when you come back, I'll show you my proof. Okay, here you see my proof. This is the first paragraph of my proof. Um, in the first paragraph, I take a typical element of the left-hand side, and I ultimately prove that it's also an element of the right-hand side, thereby showing that the left-hand side is a subset of the right-hand side. So let's see how I do that. A typical element of the left-hand side, I'm viewing it as a Cartesian product of two sets, and therefore, a typical element of it looks like an ordered pair x comma y, where x is an element of A and y is an element of B union C. So the beginning of the proof is, let ordered pair x, y be an element of A cross B union C, and then I say what that means. It means that x is an element of A and y is an element of B union C. Now, what does it mean for y to be in B union C? Thus y is either in B or y is in C. And now I take two cases separately, the one where y is in B 
and then the one where y is in c. If y is in b, then I've got x is in a, I've got y in b, so that means the ordered pair is in a cross b. Then I do a semicolon because I'm going to take the second case in the same sentence. If, on the other hand, y is an element of c, now we've got x is in a, here, and we've got y is in c, and therefore, by definition, the ordered pair xy is in a cross c. So the two cases tell us that either xy is in a cross b, or xy is in a cross c, and therefore xy is in the union of those two sets. Well, I've written here, there, thus xy is in a cross b, or xy is in a cross c, and therefore the ordered pair is in the union of those two sets. And so I started off by taking my xy in here, I proved that it was in here, and so I have the right to say that this set is a subset of this set. For the other half of the proof, we have to prove the opposite set inclusion, and that's what I'll do on the next slide. So now I have to show that this set is a subset of this set. Okay, so I begin by taking a typical element of this set. Suppose instead that xy is an element of the right-hand set. Now this time I have to see the union first. What does it mean to be an element of a union? It means either xy is in a cross b or xy is in a cross c. That's what it means to be in the union. So we'll take the two cases separately. If xy is in a cross b, then x is in a and y is in b, by definition of Cartesian product. Um, but remember, I'm trying to convince myself that the y is in b union c. And so I certainly can say that if y is in b, then y is in b union c, because b is a subset of b union c. And the second case is, if x, y is in a cross c, then x is in a and y is in c, and therefore y is in b union c, because c is a subset of b union c. So in either case, I've shown that x is in a and y is in b union c. That's an and. And therefore, by definition, the ordered pair is in the Cartesian product of those two sets. So you see, I started off by taking an element here, and I showed that it was in here. And therefore, this set is a subset of this set, and that's what I've written here. Now, if you compare 1 with 2, uh, you'll see that we've shown that this set is, in fact, equal to this set, and we're done. So now I want you to go back and see if you can write the proofs of B through E. Um, and uh, notice in particular part E is sort of an interesting one, because you see, they've taken the union of these two Cartesian products, and they claim that that's a subset of the Cartesian product of the set obtained by just taking the union of the first components and the union of the second components. So presumably, if they could have claimed equality of those two sets, they would have done so, but they only put subset. So the implication is that maybe there's there exist examples of four sets, A through D, such that this thing is really not a subset of this thing. In other words, there would be a counterexample. And so it's interesting for you to see if you can come up with a counterexample of sets A through D for which this is not a subset of this. So give that one a try, and uh, that's something that we'll consider in the following video.